Hi, welcome to our video. This is the progress of the summer 2020 build. We plan on finishing the cabin structure next year. Thanks for watching. Before we started excavation, we prefabricated all the rebar needed for the footer. We rented a rebar bender to make about 150 of these L-shaped pieces. We bent all the rebar for the footer and then set it up to ensure proper overlaps. This is me driving the backhoe across the Madison River uh, to our property. This is the first time I'd ever driven one, so I had to YouTube how to drive it. I leveled out the area for the cabin and started putting up the batter boards. It snowed that night and made conditions extremely muddy and miserable. This is the first bucket of excavation for the foundation. We dug to about eight feet down for the bottom of the footer. There's no bathroom, so anytime we had to go, we revved up the four-wheeler and rode two miles to that bridge. We're really thankful for all the help that our family was able to give us. This truck's delivering the form boards that we're gonna use for the footer, and then we're gonna repurpose those as walk boards for the ICF bracing. And then finally, they're gonna be used as the mud sills on the cabin. When most of the material was removed, we punched a hole through the side for the walkout garage. We rented a skid steer to help remove material as well. We purchased our own laser level and it proved to be a worthy investment. We use this all day, every day during the excavation. We wasted at least 30 minutes trying to get this plate compactor to start. We ended up only using the jumping jack compactor. After we had compacted the area of the cabin, we began excavating for the four foot drop of the frost footer. This area was hands down the most difficult part of the build. Getting the backhoe into position was very difficult. We ended up spending quite a few hours shoveling by hand and moving large boulders. Using the jumping jack next to this 12 foot wall was actually pretty terrifying. Luckily, my dad was there, ready to pull me out of the way in case there was a cave-in. After we had the foundation area compacted, we started placing the footer form boards. This is Micah tying rebar together. We made our own ladder for the four foot frost footer. It was difficult to get in and out of the foundation area without it. We're checking level here and getting final preparations done for the footer pour. Another reason why that frost footer was so aggravating, the walls just kept caving in and filling the forms up with big boulders that we had to move by hand. We added some bracing to those steps in the footer but other than that, this is pretty much the, all the forms are done here and we've added spreader bars and then those spreader bars have a hole in them where the rebar goes through. We put little rebar caps on just to keep things safe during the pour. This is Andrew coming up the road with the ICF forms as well as the pump truck.
The footer pour was only about 30 minutes long and we went through 12 yards of concrete. We screeded all the excess concrete off and then we went back and removed those spreader bars and tried to get everything as smooth as we could and made sure the rebars were pointing straight up. This was the last section that we did and as the um, cement truck is starting to roll away, it's empty, the pump truck operator was like, I've still got enough in my, in my hopper, I think it'll be enough and we're holding it, the chute right over this and it was just perfect. The next day we got busy stripping all the forms. We snapped the outside edge of where the ICF wall was going to be, and then we placed these PVC pipe cutouts. The PVC helps you guide the tall vertical rebar through the ICF, and then it's basically going to hold it close enough to these verticals that are coming out of the footer that it acts as one piece to tie the stem wall to the footer. We started with the frost footer, placing the ICFs. We also had to drill in and then epoxy rebar into the step in the footer. We use the form boards here to create a slide to bring the ICF bundles into the foundation area. Each row of ICFs gets a continuous run of horizontal rebar and then we alternate the position of the fingers that those are in to create a vertical chase for the vertical rebars. As it's anticipated that it is going to rain all day, um, the forecast is kind of never predictable so we are up and at it. So Andrew asked us for today because it'll probably just be a half day. The rain is expected at 11 a.m. Um, Andrew asked us to get the first few courses up so that when he comes tomorrow on Monday that he can um, help us to get the whole surface level. Once we had stacked three courses of ICFs, we checked for level. We shimmed the bottom to make sure the tops were all the same height and then we spray foam glued the outside. The inside is gonna be taken care of because it's attached to the bracing system. The ICF walls actually went up really easily and I would highly recommend that to anyone who's thinking about doing them. It's, it's very do-it-yourself friendly. My wife and I have zero experience, although we did do a lot of research. We hired Andrew Mazella and he is an ICF expert specifically with build block, the block we were using. And he brought his bracing system, we rented that, and he was a huge help during the whole build. We were able to keep the walls plumb by adjusting these turnbuckles. It rained quite a bit that week and we actually had some lost work days, but we were really happy to finish on schedule. Here you can see the repurposed form boards from the footer as the walkway on the bracing. Our lot is on the right hand side and in the background is the Madison Range. We got all the bracing done and then just a week after we poured the footer, we were on to pouring the ICF walls. In this video you'll see me dropping the vibrator in the walls to 
liquefy the concrete, get the air bubbles out. Andrew's moving the hose around, and then the pump truck operator is moving the boom around. This was just an electric vibrator. It wasn't gonna like bust through the ICF or anything if it hit up against it, but it worked really well and my shoulders got a great workout. I'm hammering a board from the inside to consolidate the concrete. My dad was using a bladeless sawzall to help consolidate concrete from the outside. We got all the concrete board and then we went and screeded the top of the walls. And then we inserted some strap hold downs. We had a representative from Build Block come out and watch the concrete pour. While the concrete was still wet, we put in the anchor bolts and then made sure all the walls were plumb. We waited a few days to take the bracing down and then we actually waited probably two weeks to take down those bulkheads around the garage door opening and the man door opening. We rolled on this tacky pink primer to help the waterproofing stick. We installed the polywall peel and stick waterproofing and then the black dimple board. Next, we started the rough in plumbing. We sealed the water and electric penetrations with liquid flash. We laid down a vapor barrier and leveled the floor to the footer. We compacted the floor and snapped chalk lines for the concrete slab. We pressure tested the septic system and then backfilled around the building. This is a before and after of the backfill and some cleanup. Then we had the basement slab poured. We came up after a couple weeks to apply a sealant to the concrete to prevent damage from frost during the winter. This part of the wall is gonna have to accept a bracket. And this block that we used was a taper top, so it kind of had an irregular shape. So we kind of had to grind off the irregular shape and make it flush so that that bracket's going to sit strong against the stem wall. In summer 2021, we plan on framing, drying in, and finishing the exterior of the cabin. Thanks again to everybody who helped out. We hope to see you again next summer.